If you have a heavenly language, go ahead and exalt the Lord in your heavenly language. Rwanda, Yes, Lord, As we come on one accord on tonight, As we begin to bombard heaven on tonight, God, we worship you. Hey God, we worship you. God, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Oh God. 
Oh God, we expect you to put our minds on tonight, oh God. Oh God, we come, God, with the spirit of expectation, oh God. Expecting to hear a word from you, Lord God. A word that will bring release in this place, oh God. A word that will bring breakthrough in this house, oh God. A word that brings unity on tonight, Lord God. Oh, God. 
Oh, God, we'll wait on you. Oh, God, we'll wait on you. 
way. I don't care what the enemy may do in your life. Listen, you got to know that it's still Jesus anyway. You see, you can't mess with me in this season. You can't mess with me in this season because guess what? I'm going to look at you and say, baby, I don't care whatever you got to say. This still Jesus for me. It's going to be Jesus. I don't care who you lead from me. I don't care whatever. I don't care. Because I know where my help comes from. And I know my help comes from the Lord. And I, my trust is not in man, not woman. It ain't about what you do for me. It ain't about what you don't do for me. Whatever. You're still Jesus. Yeah. Listen. I'm going to make God to be my God. Because ain't no woman nor a man going to be my God. Ain't nothing going to be a God to me but my real Jesus. The real Savior. The true Savior. The one who hung bled and died for me. That's the Jesus that I serve. I ain't serving nobody else. I ain't giving nobody else the glory. I ain't giving nobody else the hallelujah. He's going to get all my praise. And he's going to get my best praise. Yes, Lord. I'm going to tear it up for Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to tear it up for Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm going to sound the alarm. And I'm going to cry loud and spell out uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, because it's all about Jesus. It ain't about nothing else. It ain't about nobody else. Uh, it's all about Jesus to me. It's Jesus in the morning. It's Jesus in the evening. It's Jesus in the midnight. It's all about Jesus. Every time I think about the Lord and all that he's done for me, you see, I could have been messed up, tore up from the floor up. I could have been in a lost my mind by now. I could have been and gave up by now. But because of Jesus, I got to give credit to who the credit is due unto me. Because I know that it ain't nothing that I'm doing. It ain't my good doing. It ain't my bad doing. It ain't nothing about me that had a question to that. But it's by the God that I serve that he have mercy upon me. And I thank him for his mercy and his grace. Because he could have wanted a question to that. He could have killed me a long time ago when I was caught up in my mess. When I was caught up in the sin that I was in. He could have destroyed me. Way back then, but I'm so glad that he saw fit to give me great space and time to get it right. You just better believe it's about Jesus. When I was in my foolishness, when I was in my cushion, daddy, when I was in my craziness, he had mercy on me. That's the reason why I can't forget where I come from. I can't forget what God done done in my life because it was not of my own doing. Let the truth be told. Guess what? I was satisfied. I was happy doing what I was doing. But God, he knew that was a plan that was on my life. He knew that was an assignment on my life. He had a plan for my life. So I couldn't have stayed down. I couldn't have stayed down because he had bought me with a price. He was anointing on my life. He had called me a child before I had come to Sunday. When I was before I entered into my mother's womb, he had called me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I got to give you the glory. And I got to give you the praise. Because I know it's not me. I know that it's not me. God could have chosen anybody else. He could have picked anybody else that was better qualified. That had it all together. And you know, some folks do got it together. You like that, y'all. Listen, I ain't mad at nobody. I ain't mad because they, some folks got it together like that. But I know what God has done in my life. Listen, he done brought me through my struggles, my heartaches, and my pain. I had to cry some nights for a long time in the midnight hour. I had some sleepless nights. 
I'm excited about giving. Are you excited about giving? Yeah. Listen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give myself. I'm going to give myself. Yeah. A way up. I'm going to give myself to a way up. Okay. I'm going to give myself to a way out. Oh, y'all ain't excited. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Because I'm going to sow that seed in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to expect God to move on my behalf. Listen, y'all, I got some stuff and I'm believing God for it. And it's got to happen. Lord, God Almighty, that word suddenly was a, that word was for now. That word was for now. I caught something in that word that the, the woman of God released in the house on Sunday. Amen. You flip that word now and it means that you won. I'm looking at every single thing that the enemy is using against me and I'm looking at him and saying, guess what, devil? I won. I won. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. I can tell y'all something right now. Listen, things are being fulfilled. Prophecy is being fulfilled. Is prophecy being fulfilled in your life? Is prophecy being fulfilled in your life? Hallelujah. Thank God. All right. Come on. Let's, let's, let's continue to give. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory be to God. Has everyone given? Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, for this offer that we're taking, Lord God, and receiving. Father God, we ask that you bless it, that it be used for the kingdom of God, dear Heavenly Father, for the upbuilding and for the following of your work, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for those that gave, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for those that desired to give and didn't have to give, but God bless them next time that when they come, God, they will be able to give. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes, God. waiting for a moment. Sometimes 
just got to get still in the presence. And sometimes you got to wait to get still. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, are you ready for this teaching tonight? Are you ready for this dive in? Concerning Miriam tonight. Amen. Well, we're going to go ahead and move on and get started tonight. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening, Kingdom Nation. Hallelujah. I made it in. Richmond County just started. So I'm running all over the place, but nevertheless, God's grace is sufficient. I thank God for giving us, each and every one of us, the strength to be able to get through our daily duties and assignments and jobs and being mom and being husband and oh, all the many hats that we wear. I tell you, my body's feeling it. <laughs> but I'm not complaining, amen. I enjoy what I do. So we are studying this month Prophetess Miriam, which is Moses' sister. And I love, well, I love all of them, but I love, I love Miriam because once again, you should, as, as we study the prophets, you should see yourself in each and every one of them. They're, they're, highlights as well as their struggles. We should find some type of connection with each and every prophet, especially with us being prophets. We should see and of course learn from um, the struggles and even with the things that they uh, chose to do obedient by when God told them to do certain things. And of course we all know that um, sometimes it's not easy when God has called you to do when God has called you to speak a word, when God has called you over a set people to help bring about deliverance or shed light upon um, the things that they are uh, dealing with or even the fact that they may be walking in darkness or may have strayed away from the voice of God. So Miriam, she hit, to me, she, she was right in the middle. She had as much things, as many things that she did correctly and right, as well as as many things that she did wrong. Once again, much like us, because not one of us have arrived. We all are, are a work in progress. We all are striving for perfection. And I do understand that the word of God say in Christ, we are perfected, but we're still striving for perfection. There is no perfect person. And as prophets, we have to always keep that in the forefront to, to realize that we miss the mark at times. That, that's what keeps us humble because each and every one of us are human. We're human, even as Christians. No matter what your, your gift is, no matter what your five-fold office is, we all are human. And, and there are times when we come short of the glory of God. But nevertheless, when we hit the mark, then of course God is glorified, but when we miss the mark, God should get, still get the glory out of our life because it should be a lesson that we learn. It should be a lesson that we learn out of that life experience. So once again, Moses, he's the oldest sister of Moses and, I'm sorry, Miriam, she's the oldest sister of Moses and Aaron. And as a family, they are uh, from the tribe, the, the Levites. They're, they're praise and worshipers. And I really love this because as God is uh, probing me, having me uh, to write uh, in the future a book on being a prophetic psalmist, Miriam will be one of the women that will be in that book because as a prophetess, she was, first of all, she's the first woman in the Bible that was called a prophetess. 
And um, also, she led the women into a, a into praise and worship. She led them into praise and worship. So as prophets, that should be a part of our makeup. We should have the ability to be able to lead people into praise and worship. It says she, she grabbed a timbrel and she led them into a victory praise and worship after they uh, after Pharaoh and his army drowned in the Red Sea. So that means that we should be initiative. We should be initiators. We don't have to wait on um, certain people to be around us in order to spark a move or to make a move. We are the move. We are the move. And, and we should know uh, as far as when the atmosphere is, is ready for a certain move to hit the house, to hit around us wherever we are. It doesn't matter where we are. We still should be able to usher in what's needed. And she understood that because God did this thing for us, because God allowed us to uh, escape the hand of the enemy, this is where we need to put a praise on it. We need to we need to do a victory praise for what God has done. We don't want to allow this moment to pass. And that's what I love. She did it right then. She didn't wait until the next day. She didn't wait until a week later. But she did it right then. And she didn't care who looked at her funny. It didn't matter. She knew that God deserved that praise at that moment and at that time. So once again, as prophets... We have to make the move happen. We have to initiate the move. We have to know when the time and the season is to give God what's due unto him. Especially pertaining to what he has delivered us from or brought us out of or abstained the hand of the enemy in this case. So she was a Levite. She was the daughter of Amron and Jacobed. And she accompanied Moses as he led the Hebrew uh, people or the Israelites from slavery, from Egypt. Now, even though we, we, we use the terminology prophet or prophetess, prophet or prophetess speaks to the gender. Normally when God is dealing with the office, he, he sees no gender. So a lot of times you'll hear people say prophet or, or prophetess, but uh, it's just to, to signify whether a person is a male or a female, but the office itself is a prophet. Yes. Prophetess just speaks to the gender. Right. So prophet, prophetess, whatever you want to call her, she is an earpiece and a mouthpiece of God. Amen. But what I love about Miriam she was quick on her feet when it came to uh, the, the fact that her brother, Moses, baby Moses, when he was placed in, uh, in, in the water, the river, in order to, uh, so that Pharaoh's daughter could see him. And of course, he could, he could escape from being killed from the decree of Pharaoh as far as killing every uh, male that's born under the age of two, any male that was born. She thought quick, quickly on her feet because that plan never was in place. The plan was to put them in the, in the, in the basket that was made and pray that nothing happens to him and he gets into good hands. But a plan was never made. There was no conversation between mom and Miriam as far as what to do. See, she, this was a young girl at the time. So, young people, it doesn't matter your age. God will use you even in your youth. Because God used Miriam to move and, and, and speak on her brother's behalf. God used her to move and go to Pharaoh's daughter and ask Pharaoh's daughter, do you have someone to nurse the baby? Mm -hmm. So that shows me that she knows timing. She understands timing. She understands timing and she understood that because I need favor, because I need favor to fall upon my brother, I gotta move at the right time. I can't be too late, I can't be too early. And this was a, this was a babe, this was a, this was a young girl. I'm, I'm not going to say babe because see, I don't see I have met some children that were wiser, oh God, wiser than adults. 
She was young in age, in her natural age, but her spirit man was mature in the things of God. So she understood, she understood timing. She understood not to move too soon or not to move too late. And not only that, she knew what to say. Oh my God. I've heard people call this pink thing in our mouth a tornado. Oh God. Because sometimes we can say things that offend. We can say things that are hurt. We'll say things that can tear down. But not as a prophet. Yes, our makeup is to tear down, but it's not to tear a person's character down or to tear a person's spirit down, but it's to tear down darkness. It's to tear down things that have a person entrapped or, or the things that they may be struggling with, the things that have them bound in chains. We're tearing down strongholds. We're tearing down generational curses. Not the person, but the spirit that's in operation. Yes, 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 yes. The spirit that's in operation. But the wisdom on that is, the rest of that scripture say that we build up. I know don't see Kaya. So even as you tear down, then a word of building should come back behind that word of correction. Or that word that, that came after the spirit or, or brought about deliverance. There should be uh, some salve on that. Because you, you got to bring about balance. You have to bring about balance. You have to bring about balance. Even if you're a prophet of warning. You still have to bring about balance. Even if, if, if God reveal uh, things that may not be so lovely or pull back the covers and then look into our secret closets, those places that we don't want anybody to know about, but God revealed it. It's still, we have to use wisdom on how to, on how to deliver that word and do it in a way that it doesn't tear down that person's character or tear down uh, their faith or their hope that little sometimes people are hanging on just a little glimpse of hope some hope some hope and that wrong word may push them over the edge oh god so miriam as a young lad she understood timing she understood wording and she knew that she needed favor. So God used her to step to prophet, to uh, Pharaoh's daughter and to say exactly what needed to be said when Pharaoh's daughter heart was willing to receive, was ready to receive. Y'all know little babies, they can just, they can break you down, they'll, they'll pull at your heart strings. So she knew and she understood that Pharaoh's daughter would not be able to deny or not be able to say no to raising and rearing a child that was not biologically hers. Not only that, but it was evident by appearance that Moses was not Egyptian. It was evident by his appearance. But she did it anyway. See, that's the influence that we have as prophets on people. Not that we are soothsayers, not that we uh, are cunning in a negative way, but our words, oh God, our words can produce and it will produce that thing which we need to happen in that timing. It will produce that thing that we need for God to work out in our favor. If we speak it and we believe it. And our heart is pure. See, God had already orchestrated for Moses to be the future leader and to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. All God needed was some willing participants. All God needed was some obedient people to be in line. Miriam was one of them. Miriam was one that God was willing to use because she was at the right place at the right time with the right posture. And this is just a question I'm gonna throw out there. Why didn't God use mom? Why didn't God use Moses, Moses' mother or Moses' father or even Aaron? Aaron was alive. He was born. Moses was the baby. Why did God choose Miriam. There was something about why God chose you because he could have chose 
your sister or your brother or your mom or your dad or your friend. But there's a certain assignment that God has for you to do. Yes, he calls each and every one of us, but there's something that God has for each and every one of us to do. And we don't want to miss it that assignment. We don't want to allow that assignment to go down the river. Oh my God. And we miss the opportunity to step up when it's time to step up and to speak out. No matter what's facing against us. Because she could have been killed. Yeah. She could have been killed. No one enters into the pool when Pharaoh's daughters are bathing. You know how it is. Taking you a nice hot shower or, or in that nice bubbly tub. You don't want anybody knocking on the door when you're in a time of meditation. Why was they even on the palace steps or palace territory or, or land? How did they get there? Other than following the riverbank. There was trespassing. But when God has favored you, <laughs> You defy the laws of the land where what others would apply to others and where others will be incriminated. Where others will reap the penalties, oh God, for breaking the law, will be exempt. When God has called you, that's why it's important to make sure you don't go through every door that's open. Oh, Rabbi Sekaya. Because just because it's open don't mean that God opened it. The enemy will open up doors as well. We have to be wise as a dove, but sharp as a serpent. That's what the Bible says. We have to know when to walk through it and when to let it go. We got to know when. If it's, this, if it's of God, you'll have favor. Oh, God. If it's of God, there'll be favor. That's, that's the fruits. If it's of God, it'll be favor. It'll be favor. When it doesn't look like you should have favor in that situation. Miriam should have been killed. She should have been killed. Not her love. Moses should have been killed. But because of the mission, because of the plan God had for her, God needed her to lead these women into a victory dance. God needed her to be by Moses' side and to assist him as he lead these people, the children of Israel, once they, are, they have escaped from slavery. God had an assignment for her that was greater than anything else that she could have done. So God preserved her. God preserved her to be able to be that strength for Moses when he needed it. What great, of a, what, what great a testimony could you have? Not, not boasting and saying, I, I, I did it. But what, what great a testimony to be used by God to the point of where you can sit back and say, God used me to save my brother. And look at him now. Notice I said, God used me, not I did. Giving God the glory. Oh my God, that's a privilege and an honor to be used to that degree. To where you can sit back and say, I was a part of that move. I was a part of that. I helped push and usher in. I helped serve, oh God. And I made sure that my sister and my brother got to where they needed to be. People, my husband say it all the time, people, God give you people for your life. Oh God. He'll give you people in seasons, but he'll also give you people for your life that are assigned to your life, assigned to your assignment. Oh God. There are people that God will strategically connect you with because they are a part of the vision and the assignment. In this case, it just happened to be family, but not always is it biological blood family. But in this case, it just happened to be family. But how many of you know that sometimes family be the first ones to walk away? 
that the first one, that the hardest one sometimes to convince. But yet still, as prophets, even in that, we have to stay focused and allow God to do the work. Jump on in, baby, when you get ready. Well, well I do want to jump in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you see, my wife, she said something, Pastor D, that, that really stuck out to me, is that um, when the Bible said he gives us people for our life and they're called um, to help push the vision. I want to know how serious are you taking the assignment that God has on your life to help bring your sister or brother out or help push the work of the Lord? How serious are you really taking it? We jump in, and, and 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 a lot of times we don't we don't jump in with the right and the, I would say the full understanding, nor the understanding of the weight that comes along with that. My wife and I, we've been part of ministries, and and, and we came alongside the visionaries of the house and leaders of the house, and when we stepped up, this. It, it demanded of our time. It, it, it took time for my personal time. Yeah. But we didn't draw back from that. We didn't step back from that because we understood. We understood that we was playing a vital part yeah. of what God was doing there. As leaders, as prophets, we got to know that, listen, we, good God Almighty, we're like anchors in the house. Yeah. When you are assigned to something, and when you call to something, listen, if the anchor moves and it's holding in place, what happens? It shifts, it moves. It moves because it's important that the anchor stay whole so that nothing is shifted where? Out of place. We hold it together. I often say this, listen, the one thing I found, I sat back and I observed it one day. And in every house that you're a part, that, that you may go sit in and just observe, you're going to see people, right? You're going to see people. There's going to be individuals that's, that's going to be sitting in there that their relationship with some other individuals in the house are going to be closer than, guess what, than that which I may have with those particular individuals. Right. Would, you con would you contest to that? Right. What happens is I've learned and I've watched people cause other people to stay rooted and grounded in the house. When sometimes when people leave because they are close knitted to the people or the ones, the individuals that leave, sometimes they're not positioned well enough or anchored well enough that they will uproot and go with them when they leave for whatever reason that it may be so. Whether it's good or bad. Because we have built relationship. Yeah. Yeah. People cause people to root and get grounded where they are. Yeah. So with that natural analogy, don't you know that the weight is even greater when you are a man or woman of God that has the anointing of a prophet on your life, how significant and how vital your anointing is to where you are. And I'm helping you tonight. Yes, Miriam was a vital part yeah. of the move. Listen, like Pastor D said, she helped initiate the move. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are, whatever you do as a prophet, you help initiate the move because guess what? You may see things a day ahead, and guess what? You go ahead. Yeah. 
You go days ahead and begin to move stuff out of the way. Move stuff out of the way. And guess what? You help by doing that. You help things come together because you move the enemy's work, the enemy's plot out of the way in the spirit realm because you see days ahead. It's not left up. Listen, to the covering leaders, we can't do it all. You all play a vital part in whatever goes on in the house. Yeah, we say stay in position, but do we ever break the reason why it's important to stay in position? If you can hear it, that's some of what I'm saying to you tonight. That's the reason in the why it's vital to stay in position. Because every person is needed in the house. Amen. So Miriam was in position. <laughs> Miriam, she did what God had called her to do. And that's some of the, the positive things that, that she did. She um, Again, she protected her brother uh, as Moses went down the Nile River. She understood timing. She understood favor. She understood even to uh, the language that she used. She made sure that it was favorable and um, so that it could get her what she needed. Listen, can I jump in real quick, Pastor Dick? She said, Miriam protected Moses. Listen, part of the assignment is to protect and to guard. Yeah. Part of the assignment that we all have is to protect and guard. Listen, come on, come, come in, Pastor D. If I'm standing in front of Pastor D, and I got someone that's trying to come up, mm -hmm. and guess what? I'm guarding right. and I'm blocking where that particular individual can't get to Pastor D because I'm, I decided to protect her. That's what we got to do in the house of God. We got to decide to be the protector and the guard. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. If we decide to do that, listen, it's not something that I have to point out and say, I need you to go in the protective mode. That should already be a natural instinct as a prophet, mm -hmm. that you're going to protect. I'm not just talking about protecting the leaders. Yeah. I'm talking about protecting the atmosphere yeah. Yeah. of the house. Yeah. I'm talking about protecting the tone. Whatever, however the order of the house is, mm -hmm. that's what we must guard. That is what we must protect. Whatever as leaders have set, however the leaders have set the house, you have to hold the set order and to protect whatever is the set order of that house. Every house has a governing order that is an order that is established by God, but also there's other, there's other aspect of the order of the house that exists in any local body. Guess what? How the floor serves, but what they have in the line as far as the floor serves. Listen, we... That has to be protected because at any given time could leave room and opportunity for the enemy to show up. That if you don't guard, that if you don't guard it the right way, yes. some yes. slips yes. and get yes. in. Yes. And it feels straight yes. inside of the body and yes. throughout the body. Yes. So we got to understand what is the importance because listen, whatever gets in is not dealt with. Yeah. It moves throughout yeah. the body. Come on, come on. Oh, good God, mm. I don't know why I'm going here tonight. Mm. Jesus. Yeah. That's good. That's good. It's, it's, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm going to go and go here. But woman of God, you said that um, that was a word that you released on Sunday. I think it was Sunday. I don't think it was uh, a Wednesday. I think it was some Sunday. When you say nothing should come up in this house, not with all these prophets in the house, not with all these seers and hearers in the house, nothing should be able to creep in. That's that protection. That's protecting the house, protecting this this fortress, the the safe haven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
because this is the place that healing should take place. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, I, I didn't finish it all, but I, I, I love, um, what's her name, Prophetess Valerie Moore. And I was, I was watching earlier today, um, I'm always playing the word, I'm always feeding my spirit with the word, especially since we have to pour out. And as a teacher, I'm pouring out, so I'm constantly, I constantly have the word playing. But she spoke on that, one of her recent uh, videos, about how in this season, which is, oh God, I'm see you. Witches are popping up, popping, popping, and they're getting older, and they're coming in services, and they, they, the demons are manifesting before the people. Prophets. Matter of fact, it's titled, if you, if you got a moment, go, go see it. It's, she's talking about um, the difference between magicians, magicians, and musicians. And ministers, and how, I don't want to preach your word, but good God Almighty, that thing was awesome. On fire, I didn't finish it, but I'm gonna finish. And she talks about how, as ministers, we got to run after the oil, not be a whore when it comes to prophecy and prophets. So although it's good, it, it, the Bible says you, we all should desire to prophesy, but it's for the edification and building up of the body of Christ. Yeah, yeah. that's the word. It's it's to build people up. It's to build people up. Yes. Got to be some substance other than calling my name and giving my social yeah. security number yeah. and tag number. And this is what she says in the video. Yeah. My spirit concur. So it's important that as we study about Miriam and the different prophets, we learn yes. what the prophets went through. And, 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 it, and it ain't no pretty stories. It's no pretty thing. It's not... As, as we've already learned, they, they, they live a life that's almost like hard knocks. It's not easy. It's not glamorous. It's not glamorous. It's not easy. It's prophets. But we have to be dedicated to the assignment. We have to be dedicated to the cause. We have to lay all everything, every weight aside that's so easily beset us. And be determined in our being. They want to do what God said do. So we're going to go to some of the. Lord I hate to go to the negative. I'm not a negative person in any way. It just, it just seems like it just bring my spirit down. But we got to talk about the pitfalls of prophets. Because it's a lot of them. It's a lot of pitfalls that we can easily and all fall into. If we're not careful. And we know pride is one of them. We can get to begin. But she, she dealt with. Jealousy. She dealt with jealousy. Because when God was speaking to Moses and he decided to marry his wife, this is out of Numbers 12 and 2, she challenged him and she said, I'm going to read that directly from the word. I don't even want to paraphrase it. We're going to read this directly. Because we're not, we not going to get in this pitfall. We're not, we not going to make this mistake. Numbers 12 and 2. Well, let's go. Let's start with 12 and 1. The beginning of chapter 12 in Numbers. It says, Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married. So they had an issue with whom he married. And that's, that's, that, you know, that happens. That's, you know, sometimes people may not be in agreement with who you chose. They may not be in agreement with who um, is promoted. They may not be in agreement with the fact that you are promoted. They, people, people, you can't please everybody. You can't be a people pleaser. And the sooner we learn it and realize it and be okay with it, the better and at peace we can be and live. Just can't please everybody. You never will. You never will. You never will. So they spoke against him because he married his wife. For he had married a Cushite, a Cushite woman. They said, has God indeed spoken only with Moses? Hasn't he spoken also with us? So basically they're saying, I hear from God too. God ain't just speaking to you. God spoke to us too. But this is the difference. When they said it, God heard it. That's the difference. 
you got to be careful when you come against leadership. And we say it all the time. We say it all the time. But this is why. Because God hears it. When you come up against leadership. It's not a leadership thing. It's a God thing. It's a, it's a God thing. God doesn't like it. He doesn't and, like it. And the reason being is, you got to remember one thing, that for each woman and each man, they are man on the handles of a, a service that particular day. But God put them in the position God puts them in the position. So anything that, that God has his name on, listen, understand. Remember this protection? God has built the hands of protection around them. The Bible says an enemy of mine is the enemy of him. What do you think that sounds like? Don't that sound like that God is going to deal with the individuals that's against any set man or any set woman that, that we don't have to take it in our own hands and listen some do now. Some do take it in their own hands. But I understand that if I take it in my hands and not let God deal with it, the same judgment that God is going to give them is going to come back to me. Because God is no respectable person. If he's not, if the Bible says he shall reign on the unjust as well as the just. Yeah, yeah. So if he's going to judge them, Come on. Mm -hmm. he's going to judge me too because guess what, what, what did I do? Got the way. Uh -huh. I stepped out of the will yeah. of God and I got in agreement uh -huh. mm -hmm. and I went yeah. to their level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And because I stepped down to their level, mm -hmm. then God has to judge me yes. the same way. Listen, we miss that. We miss that. I'm here to tell you, if there ever was a time to get an understanding of that, I believe this is the time that we need to really truly get an understanding of that. That we got to be careful what we do and what we say. The Bible says, do not become a partaker of no man's sin. Don't get in agreement with someone that's, getting, that's, that's coming against the set man or the set woman. In the house of God. Yeah. And that's just, that's, the, that's whomever God has Amen. in that leadership role. That's right. You know, government, president, United States, right. you know, your, your supervisor, your, your, um, the person that, that's over you, your parents for the children, and, and for the adults too. Our parents, we still have to show that respect. Yeah. Whomever that, that set person is um, at the time, we just have to give that, that respect and allow God to yeah. do the doing. Yeah. Let God handle that situation if they are out of order in their in their governing and in their um, the way that they handle the people. The they handle the people. So in verse 12 and 3, still in Numbers, it says, Now the man Moses was very humble, Above all, the men who were on the surface of the earth. So here it is, you have his brother and sister basically hating on him. But he's walking around home. He's not walking around, uh, basically he didn't give them any reason for them to come at him. He's just being obedient to what God has told him to do. Go to the mountain get instructions from God, come back, and enforce the instructions. Their assignment is to help him enforce what God says, the commandments, to keep order amongst the people. But we all, we, we, we heard the, the, read the story about how they 
They wanted to hear from God themselves and how God came and an earthquake came and swallowed them all up. But here it is, you have his closest inner circle now saying, God, I hear from you too. And I don't like the decision that he made. I hear from God. I think he should have chose somebody else. I think that he should have made a different choice, a different decision. But Moses was simply obeying God and being humble. 12 and 4 says, God spoke suddenly to Moses and to Aaron and to Miriam. Come out, you three, to the tent of meeting. They three came out. Verse 5, God came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the door of the tent and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. God, God called them out. God called them out. But it wasn't calling them out for them to receive a blessing. It was calling them out for them to receive correcting. See, that's the thing. When you come against leadership or leaders, God will correct you. He's going to correct you out in the open. God will do the correct and he'll, he'll correct you out in the open. And we don't want God to correct us out in the open for being disobedient. Uh, verse 12 and 6, he said, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, God, will make myself known to him in a vision. And I will speak to him in a dream. But my servant Moses is not so. See, that's the difference between the set man and woman and those that are serving alongside. God said in this passage, he said, my servant Moses is not a prophet that I speak to in a vision or I speak to in a dream. He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak mouth to mouth, even manifestly and not in dark speeches, in the form of God shall he see. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Why were you not afraid? See, there's no fear. There's no fear with speaking against those that are in position. There's no fear in trembling. There's no honor. Not like how it used to be. But God is bringing it back. See, I gotta, I gotta, I can't tear down. I gotta also build it back up. God is bringing order back in the house of God. We declare it. There will be order, and there will be honor, and there will be the fear, not because of man, but fear in the principles and the oracles and the order of God. Not fear of man, but fear. And what God has ordained, because that's still an ordained thing. That's an ordained thing of God. God ordained it. God ordained it. He called it. He said it. That's his order. Yeah. Yes. Not man's. It's, it's, it's God's order. Bye, bye. Bye. See, God showed, he, he spoke this to me. When, when we have a dream as prophets, and not belittling the prophet, but when we have dreams or visions or even hear what God says, we can misinterpret that. We can misinterpret a dream. We can misinterpret what we heard, thought it was God, but it might have been flesh. But when he speaks mouth to mouth and face to face, there's no getting that wrong. When the person is sitting before you and you have a conversation. See, Moses and God had conversations. Miriam heard, she saw, she had dreams. We can't fall in that pitfall as, as, as prophets. We have to make sure that we honor the man or woman of God that said over us because there are things that, that God told them directly, not an interpretation. Not an interpretation, but it was clear, it was sound, it was face to face. I'm here to tell you, God, is, he will never call you in a position. And he, he don't talk to you face to face. That's why we got to trust. We got to trust. We got to trust. We ain't going to stand up here and say, yeah, God sat down with me at lunch yesterday. Because that sounds too spooky. But we will say, God said, this is what God showed us. 
This is the direction. This, this is what God said. He's going to take his set leaders up on the mountain. Oh, God. I'm not all scared. He's going to download. That's why we, we can't doubt. Because we saw it. We heard it from his mouth. There's no doubt. There's no, there's no dream. Because I ate the wrong thing. And now I'm dreaming something. I don't know if it was the food or was it God. There's no dream. But it was God himself. And, and, and something I want to bring out that that happened to Moses. When they came up against him, though he was pointed as their leader, there's always, when you moving in the area and direction of the will and the assignment of God that's on your life, there's always going to be the unwanted things that may happen may come up against you. So you got to know and listen. You got to understand that it's coming. So listen, you can't be easily moved by what the enemy brings to you to try to get you off your path, off the course, off the assignment that God has placed on your life because the unwanted things yeah. are going to show up. There's going to be people that's going to come up against you. Wait, listen. Good God, no matter if I can tell, if I'm going to tell y'all the truth. Soon as we gave God the yes to, to do what he called us to do and, and, and walk in the assignment, that's when all hell hit. Immediately, all hell hit. So we have a decision to make. Whether we're going to be obedient and fulfill the will of God, the assignment of God, or will we move out of position? We made a decision to stay in position and move where God had placed the assignment. You're going to have to be willing, guess what, to deal with or and accept what the enemy brings without moving out of position. Don't abandon the assignment. All right, it says in verse 12 and 9, the anger of God was kindled against them. So because Aaron and Miriam spoke or, or didn't agree with what Moses' the decision that he made, God became angry. He became angry against them. And he departed. That's 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 another repercussion that happens if we're disobedient as prophets and then if we speak against uh, leadership. See, no one should do it, but God holds the prophet at a greater weight, a greater a level of responsibility because there is power in our words. Don't you know if we speak against leadership, it's like speaking a curse. It's like speaking a curse. It's like speaking a curse. So that's what made God angry at them. But check this out. Let's look at 12 and 10. Not only did God become angry, but it says the cloud removed from over the tent. He removed his glory. And I'm going to jump in right here real quick. Listen. That's, that's when, when that happens. In a prophet's life, that's when you can can be moving and thinking that God is still with you and the presence of God is still with you. But in actuality, the anointing and the presence of God has lifted and left your life. But you can still operate. You can still operate in, in the gift. But the anointing is not there because the presence of God has uplifted. This is dangerous to be a prophet and the presence of God has uplifted off of your life. That's the reason why we must stay lonely, humble. I say follow the word before the word falls on you. you got to 
always stay within the word because it's a dangerous thing to be out there and listen. I believe there's some. I believe there are those. There are some that are, that's out there that once have been anointed. God was speaking to them and they were moving under the power and the anointing of God. But listen, when that happens, then you become the false prophet. Mm -hmm. False prophets have once operated under the anointing and the power of God. But the Spirit of God, for whatever reason, I'm not going to try to get into that, has lifted off your life. You got to be careful this season. You got to be careful this season. Verse 10, it says, The cloud will move from over the tent, and behold, Miriam was leprous, as white as snow. And Aaron looked at Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. So, not only did God become angry, not only did God move himself away, he took his hand off of uh, her life, or their life, Miriam and Aaron, but now he's stricken Miriam, not Aaron. But Miriam, with a sickness, with leprosy. Aaron said to Moses, Oh my Lord, please don't lay sin on us. For that we have done foolishly. And for that we have sinned. Let her not, I pray, be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed. When he comes out of his mother's womb. Moses cried to God, saying, Heal her. God, I beg you. Oh, so much in that. that. Honestly, that right there alone is a message all by itself. Just those couple of verses. But her, her, her result, end result was leprosy. But God did not stricken Aaron. He only gave it to Miriam. Why? Again, because of her call. Her call. Sarah Jake said, she says, you know better, but you don't do better. She knew better because of the call. She should have known better because of the call. God held her to a higher standard. And we say it all the time to whom much is given, much is required. It was required of her because of her position and her call. It was required for her to handle what she handled in a different situ a different way. But because she did not handle it in the godly way, or the way God would have had her to handle it, she had to reap those unfavorable seeds. She had to reap that. She had to reap it. She had to reap it. But this is what stood out the most to me. Aaron prayed and ask God, don't kill her. But God didn't move until, until Moses, until Moses cried out. And that's when she was healed. And that's when she was healed. And I want to share something with that. Take notice to that. Take notice to that. The very one that you come up against as the set person, you see, in actuality, what really happened, that was a curse. It was a curse. But the leader had to recognize that if they prayed to God, that God was going to uplift them. And that's why we have to always keep in mindset, and I think about this all the time, when I feel that I've been done wrong, forgive them, Lord. They know not what they do. And that's the posture that Moses had to keep. Because he could have easily got in his feelings or got in his flesh. She came against me. She didn't like who I married, so no, she needed to die with leprosy. That's the wrong attitude. That's, that's, that's not of God. That's not of God. We have to make sure as leaders, all of us leaders, we have to make sure that we handle the situation right and correctly. Just as Moses did, and pray for that person at their time when they didn't understand. 
when they didn't understand what they was doing. But I'm sure she learned a hard dog lesson. But because of this, because she had to still go through that leprosy, in verse 15 it says, Miriam was shut up outside of the camp for seven days. Why did they, why did they send her outside of the camp? And you talked about it earlier. For one, it was a disease that, that was unto death. But it was so that that disease would not infect others. When you have a person, I call it, it's a leaky spirit. When they're disgruntled and they begin to whisper over here and whisper over there and lay those seeds of discord and lay those eggs among the congregation and bring division in the house. That's a leaky spirit. That's a spirit that got to be put out the camp. Telling you in the season we ain't going forward. Before I let division come in kingdom nation, I'll say there's the door. I promise you. My baby ain't gonna die. Kingdom nation ain't gonna die. I'll be divided because of, of a leaky spirit. Prophets, we're not gonna fall in that pitfall where because we are not in agreement or don't understand yeah, yeah. that we speak against that which we don't understand get understanding that's what the Bible yeah. says but though not get it get understanding yeah. go before God yeah. gotta give you the understanding I'm gonna show you you first now I'm telling you yeah. <laughs> he gonna show you you that's the understanding you gonna get That say it's tight, but it's right. I don't, I don't even feel comfortable saying it, but it gotta be said because it's not, it's not, it's not my demeanor at all. You know the old saying, "When mom be whooping you, she say it's gonna hurt me more than it's gonna hurt you." That's how I feel, honestly. That's how I feel. It's like, oh God, I don't even want to say it, oh Jesus, because it's hurting me. But I know it's gonna help all of us. It's gonna help us grow. Um, I think it, I, don't, I can't. I don't know who it was. I've heard so many, so many of my favorite ministers this week. I don't know if it was Torrey Roberts or Sarah. I think it was Torrey said, "Warriors, they grow instead of go." So as warriors and as prophets, we have to grow into the knowledge of God until so we can be more effective in the kingdom. And that's the main reason why God. Have a study, the prophets. He said to study the prophets, just to study, just to look at the study. But it doesn't have to be prophets; it could be anybody in the Bible. We just wanted to do prophets, and then we'll shift to other things as God allows, so that we can see what they did. And again, this is just surface. You dive deeper in your own study time. We just on the surface, and you dive deeper, so God can give more revelation. So that we can learn from the prophets of old. And we can be that prophet for today's time. But the principles don't change. The principles don't change. Same principles. Same principles that we learn from the lessons. Has this been good? Yeah. 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 You know, I'm getting so much uh, myself. Um, as we do this, um, I thank God that he has led us this way because it's, it's, it's pulling on us. Amen. It's pulling on us and it's growing us. And I'm here to tell you that, you know, for what God is doing and for what God wants to do, um, not just only in this house, but in, in his body, that he wants to say some things but, and do some things. But first of all, God has to make he has to get that order in the house of God, um, his order. And so we have to understand what his order is. And so I believe as, as we are moving and we are studying the, the concern of the prophets, that God is also helping us get understanding what his order is and how we need to submit to the hand of God and the order of God so that we can be effective 
in the kingdom. And that's what it's all about, y'all. Listen, I know this is kingdom nation, but I tell y'all, the kingdom of God is bigger than kingdom nation. And listen, what I do, I don't do for myself. I do for the kingdom of God. This assignment is not about me. It's not even about kingdom nation. It's about the kingdom of God. And I say I want kingdom nation to be the best that we can be as kingdom nation for the kingdom of God. I want you all that's a part of kingdom nation to be the best that you can be for the kingdom of God. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. While you reside here at Kingdom Nation. Yes. I can never get it twisted. Because the minute I get it twisted, I will only see Kingdom Nation. I will only see Kingdom Nation as this local ministry. And I won't ever see the kingdom of God. But if I see the kingdom of God first, and then see kingdom nation in the kingdom of God, I believe that's the right perspective. Amen. So I never want to lose that perspective because I believe in my heart that's, that's a God perspective. And we can move and walk in the fullness that God has for kingdom nation. That is my heart. That's all I'm concerned about. That you be the best version of you for the kingdom. Amen. 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 Thank you, Facebook, for connecting with us and watching on tonight. We know that you were blessed by the word. If you would like to do any donations, uh, cash app is dollar sign, keep the nation, PPMM. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast on tonight. And we will catch you again, see you again on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock a.m. Amen. We love you and be blessed.